Anyway, uh, I am uh, amazed at the love of God and the love that the children have shown me. I have talked to many of you individually in the last two, three weeks, and each time it's uh, felt the love that you have in your heart, which comes from God's Holy Spirit. It, it's the love from God. It can only be found in God's kingdom. It cannot be imitated or made up. But it only is found here in God's kingdom. <coughs> the Bible says, Jesus says, that uh, when you uh, enter into God's kingdom, you receive a hundredfold of brothers and sisters, manifold blessings, and eternal life. And when I was on labor, as well as others, we had nothing. We had zero brothers and sisters and zero hope of eternal life. Now, talking about age, Patriarch Jacob was asked how old are you? He said, I'm 130 years old. Few and evil have been all the days of my life. And then he says, I am not nearly as old as my forefathers. He didn't say, sometimes I was evil. He says, all the days, every day of his life was evil. And so, likewise, we can, uh, we can say, isn't whether we be 80 or so on or so forth, all our days are only evil. We have to entirely depend on God's grace. He said his forefathers were older. Isaac was 180 years old. Abraham was 175 years old. And if you add up all those numbers, they don't even come close to being as old as Methuselah, Noah, and Lamech. So our life is short. 80 years is nothing. We're momentary travelers on this earth. We're just foreigners and pilgrims. Our goal is heaven. Is a great gift of God. And then, as they 
realize that their friendship is not only a friendship, but it's more serious. Uh, it is a relationship that leads to love and engagement, a wonderful event. When a man can slip a ring on the left finger of a girl, that is a momentous occasion. So think of all of the events that then follow. Engagement parties, showers, making of wedding invitations, it's non-stop joy. But then we come to that penultimate day of youth for you, the wedding day, when the bride is prepared. She's dressed in white garments. She's beautiful. And she stands there to, at the entrance of the church. And she looks far down the aisle. And what does she see? She sees her bridegroom. And all rise, and all eyes focus on the bride as she takes those slow and anxious steps to go meet her bridegroom. And there are they together, standing before God and the congregation are united by his word. They who were, were moments before, two, are now joined in the garden. In holy matrimony, lifelong union. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And as they walk out arm in arm, they are soon greeted by hugs and kisses and embraces tears and handshakes non-stop. And a banquet table is prepared for all. And the wedding celebration continues. But at the end of the day, the wedding, wedding celebration ends for the wedding guests, but not for the bride and the bridegroom. Off into the sunset they go, up in the clouds to fly. The country far away. And there is all bliss and happiness, joy, but togetherness. They enjoy their honeymoon. Turn now to Psalm 410. Follow closely now the words is up in the balcony, 3, 4, and 5. And also up in the balcony is we have this congregation organist, Joel Anderson. Todd will sing the first two, and the rest of us will join in the verses uh, three, four, and five. 